In this video, we're going to be migrating my Raspberry Pi install of Home Assistant onto a Proxmox server. Make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surrey Tech, and today we're going to be migrating Home Assistant from a Raspberry Pi onto a Proxmox server from a Windows machine. We're going to install Proxmox on the computer, open it up, set it up, and then create a virtual machine from Home Assistant to run in and migrate everything over. So let's get going. So the first thing we've got to do is navigate to Proxmox, Google it, and then go to the Virtual Environment Archive and download the ISO for the latest version of Proxmox VE. So now you obviously need to plug in your drive into your computer so you can put the image onto it. Once that's downloaded, the next job will kind of depend on which system you have running. If you're on a Windows machine, you can just use Etcher and, well, flash it directly from there. Um, but if you're on Mac, you need to do some other complicated things. I've left a link down in the description to tell you what you need to do. But you basically need to do this HDI util convert command um, to convert your ISO in image into an image image. Once you've done that, you need to go to do disk util list to see the drives that you've got available. And you want to unmount the USB drive that you've got plugged in for to put the image onto. I hope I could spell. Once it's unmounted, you need to use this sudo dd command uh, to put the image onto the drive, basically. And once that's happened, then we're all good to go. We can plug it into our Windows machine and open up the boot menu options. Um, it may take a couple of times for you to find out what works for you. I had to use the legacy boot option. Um, under UEFI uh, with secure boot off and it worked for me. And then once it's booted, you'll get this window and then you can just install Proxmox and it will take its time going through some installing things. Um, don't worry if it says it can't find things to start with, just try again or maybe wait until it has found it. And then you should get given the uh, GUI for the rest of the installation process. End user agreement could just Click through this, obviously. Check the hard disk is correct. Uh, if you only got one hard disk in your machine, then that's fine. Add in your country, time zone, and keyboard layout. And then you need to add an email address and password. You're going to need to know this password for when you want to log in to Proxmox for the first time later on. Once you've done that, it's the network stuff. So make sure you check your network settings. Give it a host name, which is where you'll find it later on. Uh, and if you want to give it a static IP address, do that in here and also assign the gateway and the DNS server. Click next and you get a summary of your system. Double check everything's right there, I'm sure it will be. And then click install. It will do its shenanigans, it will take a, a little while to, to work, so just let it do its thing and once it's done, it'll tell you it's successful and it will terminate the whole situation. It'll then reboot and it should automatically boot up and start Proxmox. After reboot, the first window you'll get is this blue screen, um, which gives you the option of booting into Proxmox. If you don't touch anything, then it will automatically do that. Otherwise, if you wanted to boot into something else, you can do that here. And once it's done its thing and booted up, you can see that it's got its IP address and that's correct and we can then go to our web browser to actually start running the environment. At this point, if you want to unplug your server and put it away and plug, restart it or whatever, then do so. Now, it's worth saying here that I had major problems booting into Proxmox. For some reason, it would only boot for me if I went into the BIOS settings and saved and exited, and then it would restart and boot correctly. Otherwise, it just wouldn't boot. Um, I think that's a BIOS issue with me. But if you do have issues, give that a go. Just try all of the settings, write down what you've tried so you know where, where you go wrong. And I'm sure at some point, eventually something will 
boot perfectly well for you and you'll figure it out. But for me, every time I restart the server, I need to enter the BIOS settings, which is a bit of a nightmare. Right, so now in theory, our Proxmox server is up and running. And if we go to HTTPS, not that, 192.168, not that either, 0 0.106, port 8006, we have a server. Now we log in with the username of root and the password that we set earlier. And we're in. Don't worry about this message. Um, you can ignore it. It'll pop up every time you log in, but you don't actually need a subscription to get Proxmox to work. Right, so this is our Proxmox interface. Um, we've got on the bottom our logs. We've got on the left a kind of hierarchy server view. So this is the machine that I'm currently running on. If you have multiple Proxmox servers uh, set up in your instance, then they'll all appear kind of under the data center alongside this one. And then inside that, we can see our current storage things. And obviously, if you click on them, you get different information in this panel here, uh, depending on which thing you're on, including, of course, a shell, a summary with various charts, including CPU usage, etc. Uh, disks, file, all of the kind of stuff. First thing we're going to do is run an upgrade. And this will pop up a console window. And we'll use UTF-8 encoding, English, UK Macintosh, because I'm on a Mac, hopefully. All it does is move the at symbol anyway. Oops, my face you cracked. There we go. Right, so that has happened. We can close this window, leave the site, and in theory, if we press refresh now, it won't come up with anything. Uh, ignore this error. That's just because we don't have the subscription, so it can't look in the enterprise place. No updates. Fantastic. So now what we need to do, of course, is create our virtual machine for Home Assistant. So to do that, we just click Create VM. It's going to be on this node. Give it an ID. Each virtual machine has its own ID. And then a name. Ooh. And under advanced, of course, we want it to start at boot. Don't want to give it an OS. Um, we'll do that when we copy the file over later. As for the system, all the usual stuff, we want our BIOS to be UEFI and storage to be the local one um, because that's what we want. A hard disk we can leave as it is. CPU, give it as many cores as you want to give it. It lets you use quite a lot. I've only got four, so I'm going to give it four. Um, and then memory, again, you need at least, at least two gig. I'm going to say minimum of one. I'll give it a maximum of three, which Although it is dynamically, dynamically, although it is dynamically allocated, it just means I've got a gig spare for any other virtual machines that I want on this device. Ignore the network stuff, and we can confirm. And here you can see it's popped up on the right, and this is our Home Assistant VM. And we will go to the hardware, and we're going to need to obviously add in our OS. So if we head over to Home Assistant, under Installation, under Alternative, we want the QCAL2 image. So we can download that here. Now we can extract this, and then we need to copy it over to our Proxmox server. 
So to do that, we open a terminal window. We're going to do SCP HOS, fill that out, root at 192.168.0.106, and hit enter. Yes, we want it to work. Enter the password and let it copy. We can then head back to Croxmox, uh, go to the shell, and double check it's there. Oh my god, it is! So then we need to move it, obviously, into the virtual machine, because currently it's just sitting in the shell of Proxmox. Okay, then we have to run this command. Now this command, the QM, is running your or managing your virtual machine. Import disk is importing the OS that you want to run. 101 being the ID of the virtual machine you're running. And then this is the file name. So, slash root slash hasos or haos uh, and it's version 6.1 I'm running uh, but double check your file name once you're sure that it's in the right place and ocal lvm and then our format is a qcal2 so we run that and let it do its thing okay now we can head into our virtual machine and under hardware we can see we now have our hard disk and our unused disk zero so hard disk is what was already there Unused disk zero, which is dash disk two, is the Home Assistant install that we just did. So we remove the old one by detaching, and then it's popped up at the different at the bottom disk zero. So we remove it, and then disk one, no disk zero, which is now disk two, still called disk two here, um, is the one that we want. So we double click on it, and we click add. You can see that it's created itself with a 32 gig of space. You may want to change that, I definitely do, um, but you're adding an increment here. So what well, I want 128 gigs, I've already got 32, so we need another 96. And that gives us a size of 128 gig on our hard disk. Now you probably don't need 128 gig, um, I'm being very generous here, but I'm not planning on running much on this device and I've got a terabyte of space, so that's what we're going with. Equally, the recommended amount is only 32 gig. Okay, and before we do anything else, we're going to want to jump into our options and check our boot order. We want to make sure that we're able to boot from the disk that we just had, and you might want to drag that to the top as well. Once we've done that, we can hit start and head into our console and see what's happening. And we can see everything's installing. Fantastic. And once Home Assistant has started up, we can head to homeassistant.local colon 8123. Make sure it's HTTP. And it's preparing. And once this is done, we can log in and everything. And after a few minutes, this screen pops up. And you can either start afresh and create a new account, or you can restore from a previous snapshot. And I'm going to create a new account now. And there we have it, Home Assistant up and running on a Proxmox server. Now's a good time to say that if you're not already, make sure you are downloading and uploading and saving and creating snapshots at least once a week because things go wrong. Things always go wrong. No matter how impervious you think you are to things going wrong, they'll go wrong and it will happen at the worst possible time. So there we go, Home Assistant installed on Proxmox. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.